we are going to talk about derivatives today. Derivative itself is a limit, it is a limit of ratios. It measures the change of x, change of the function of value f relative to the change of the independent variable x. So, f dash of x is a limit as h tends to 0. This is for a general function from R to R. So, I have taken a function from R to R whose real line to the real line and I am giving the de definition of the derivative. Now, you see this is the change in the function value, this is the change in the value of the independent variable x has changed to x plus h. Now, as I told you that h can come to 0 from both these sides, this side or this side. So, you come to this from the right side you say h is going to 0 plus, if you come from the left side you say h is coming from 0 minus. Now, what is further important to note is that this limit has to exist and if this limit exists it means it has two components the right deriv right limit and the left limit and both should exist. The right limit of this is called the right derivative and the left limit of this is called the left derivative. So, which will write as follows. So, the right derivative So, right derivative is uh, h tends to 0 plus and the left derivative Our derivative exists if these two limits exist left and right limit and they must be equal. So, if so the derivative exists only under this condition the left derivative equals the right derivative and which the and their common value is the value of the derivative. Of course, you know of several facts. Now, what, what about a function f from open interval a b to r and what about a function f from closed interval a b to r. You observe that when you are taking open interval the points a and b are not in the interval and hence if you take any point in a and b here or here or here however near they are towards a or b you can still have a both sided limit. That that that's essentially what's called the in the continuum of the real line, the the, in, the sense of infiniteness of the real line. These certain things, the real line has to be felt; it, it cannot really be taught. And now, there's some remark that I want to make when you're talking about this. What when I say the derivative exists, I say on for a function from a closed interval a to b to r means f dash x exists finitely for all x in the open interval part and when I am talking so what do when I am talking about the derivative at a I am actually then considering the right derivative at a and the left derivative at b this is very very fundamental issue, but one has to be very clear in his mind from the very beginning. Now, you are all uh, experienced about derivatives, you have learnt it in calculus. You all know that this simply means where n is a number, real number. So, if I take the derivative of this, you know how to calculate it through first principles. But I want to tell you that the certain much interesting use of the derivative which will soon come, but let me tell you something. For example, if you want to compute the derivative of f of x is equal to mod x, does it have a derivative everywhere? Absolute value of x? The answer is no. So, we will show that at x equal to 0, 
f x is equal to mod of x has no derivative. So, when I am talking about the derivative of a function over the whole domain or the whole r I am ex ex meaning that each at every each and every point the derivative exists. So, these things has to be understood but these are very uh, simple things. Now, how do I know that the derivative at, at x equal to 0 does not exist? This is by checking the right derivative on the left derivative. So, for this function the right derivative is given in this way. So, at x equal to 0, so my x is now 0, so I am replacing x with 0. So, 0 plus h minus 0 by h. Now, this is mod of h by h. So, now because h is uh, positive, so h mod of h is h, so h by h is 1. Left derivative let us calculate. Now, because if since h is now strictly less than 0 mod of h is minus h which is minus 1. If, if those who have forgotten what is mod of x let me tell you mod of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 is equal to minus x if x is strictly less than 0. That is if, we, if you even so if x is a negative 1 you, you only get its positive part that that is the meaning of modulus x. That is the mod x simply means the distance of a number from 0. If you have 0 you would have 2 and minus 2. The distance of if you are measuring in centimeters each block 1 centimeter then distance of 0 to 2 is 2 centimeter and distance from 0 to minus 2 is 2 centimeter. So, every function need not have a derivative. And if you look at f x is equal to mod x, if you look at its diagram, f x is absolute value of x, then you see this is a continuous function because you can draw the graph of this function without lifting your pen from the paper. So, again I want to go back to Benoit Mandelbrot statement that you would know calculus much better if you know at the very outset that every continuous function need not have a derivative. Of course, there are functions which are continuous at every point and not differentiable at any point. These are monster functions created by Weierstrass of which we are not going to make any discussion. There is an interesting idea called the symmetric derivative. This is just for an idea I am talking about. I am really not going to deal with it much. It is called the symmetric derivative. So, in symmetric derivative at x is given as follows limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x minus h. So, I am looking at the two end points both movement this side and that side divided by twice of h. Now, the funny part is that this is called a symmetric derivative. Now, the funny part is that this derivative can exist even the derivative itself does not exist. For example, you know let us let us now con consider f of x is equal to mod of x and let us try to calculate its symmetric derivative. So, it is limit h tends to 0 that is 0 plus mod h minus 0 minus mod h by h. So, we can have two parts right. So, limit h tends to 0 you can divide it into two parts h positive h negative and left limit left limit left limit right limit and do it, but that is not really required as this is mod h minus mod of minus h. So, mod of minus h is same as mod h. So, basically this is 0 because this same as limit mod h minus mod h. So, if h is positive this is negative. So, this will again have a minus and will become mod h. So, you can do the same thing if a, if h is positive say this is this is negative. 
So, there will be a minus in front of it and it will become h. So, it will become h minus h. You can try it out with h negative separately if you are not convinced with the fact that mod of minus h is minus h because the distance of h from 0 and distance of minus h from 0 are the same. So, you just have to understand that the absolute value of a given number is nothing but its distance from the 0, the distance from the origin 0. So, this is 0. So, the symmetric derivative of this function exists even though the symmetric derivative is not, the actual derivative does not exist. In fact, if f has a derivative, then the symmetric derivative is equal to the derivative. Okay, that is beside the point. Let us now look into the usage. For example, yesterday we were talking about a limit of this form and we will see how useful it becomes. Now, let us try to look at the function f of x is equal to log of x. Of course, x has to be greater than 0 that is the domain. So, the domain of this function, so basically this function f log x, this log function is actually defined from 0 So, you know already that the domain of this function is 0 to infinity. Now, we want to compute this from the first principles that is we want to compute this limit. So, this is same as limit h tends to 0. So, I write again. So, what I will get? It is log of 1 plus h by x. See, my x is now fixed. x is a fixed number and x cannot be 0. x has to be bigger than 0. So, now what I will do is here my I have one limit h by x. So, I will divide so, multiply both sides top and bottom by 1 by x. So, I will have limit h tends to 0 1 by x multiplied at the top which can be bought out because it is just a constant. So, it is not depending on it h by x. Now, observe that when h is going to 0 and x is a fixed positive number h by x also goes to 0. So, this is same as 1 by x limit h by x going to 0 log of 1 plus h by x by h by x and that is known to be 1. So, ultimately we have 1 by x. So, this is a very very useful way to obtain the limit. You see how we have made a use of this limit. But now we will see we have never given a proof to how do I actually get this limit. So, we have used it here. An uh, interesting way to prove it is to use what is called the L'Hopital's rule. So, in India we will call it L Hospital's rule, but if you go by the French pronunciation it is called L'Hopital's rule. He was a he was taught by John Bernoulli and possibly the result was given by John Bernoulli to L'Hopital who was a rich man's son and he later on wrote a book on the calculus. Now, what is, a, what is L'Hopital's rule? L'Hopital's rule essentially deals with trying to find limits of this form. Now, 
suppose f and g are both nice continuous functions beautiful functions but but suppose f of a by g of a is in the form 0 by 0 then of course you cannot say i'll just take limit fx by limit gx then it's not possible because it's 0 by 0 so your divis divisibility rule that you have about limits completely breaks down here right so what should be done now to handle such limits so there's this interesting rule it says that okay if f dash x and g dash x exists and if many of the if the functions are differentiable of course we have to assume it's differentiable at every x and if g dash x is not equal to 0 then limit of x tends to a f x by g x is equal to limit of f dash x by g dash x and when I am talking about f dash x and g dash x exists means I am talking about that the derivative exists at all x from the domain of the function and then if g dash x is not equal to 0 on the domain for every x then this limit is same as this limit what could be a possible application of this let us see so let us look at the following limit again so if i put x equal to 0 that is sin 0 by 0 it is this is again in the 0 by 0 form, but I know the derivative of sin exists sin of x if I take the derivative which we write at as like this the derivative is also just for your recalling because you know it in high school the derivative of f at x also written as f dash x this was a notation of Newton while Euler gave the following notation some people also credit it to Leibniz. But Euler is really uh, the person who gave this, made this notation popular, where we call it ddx of the function f. Never, usually we say df dx or df by dx. So it is not a rate, it is not a ratio. Df is not something, and dx is not something. It is ddx is the operator which is operating on f. So you have to remember, you should always call it ddx of f. That's the right thing, which we are basically we are writing just a shorthand to write it very fast. It's not df dx. It's not a ratio of two numbers. So, d d x of sin x is cosine of x, right. And when cosine of x is not, cosine of x is there, so it exists. And d d x of x is 1 and that is not equal to 0. So, which means limit of x tends to 0 sin x by x is same as limit of x tends to 0 cos x by 1 and as x tends to 0 cos 0 is 1 it is a continuous function and that is what you get. Then let us look as a, as a last example for today is the logarithmic is the one which we had just used to compute the derivative of log x. Now if I would x equal to 0 it will become log 1. So, log 1 is 0. So, it will again be in the 0 by 0 form. So, let me take the derivative of log x. Now, I may see this is some sort of a little bit of circular thing. Of course, there is a geometrical proof of this. You can do a proof of this, but we are not going to do a proof of this. Of course, these limits came into existence when we were uh, this uh, people when they first got to these limits, they actually did it by computation did it by experimentation. Remember mathematics is also an experimental subject, the thing which I tried to tell you in the last lecture and uh, very specifically so is calculus. So now if you take the derivative of this, it is 1 by 1 plus x. Okay. 
and you know if we exist strictly greater than 0 this is also non zero this, this this is a very well defined thing and derivative of x so d d x of log x is this and d d x of x, x is 1. So, basically now again by applying the L hospitals L hospitals rule or L hospitals rule if you want then we have limit x tends to 0 log of 1 plus x by x as 1 by 1 plus x limit x tends to 0 by 1. Now, these are continuous function because x is strictly greater than 0 and x is tending to 0 and that gives you 1. So, with this we end today's talk and tomorrow we will tell you some more important properties of the derivative how to differentiate the sum of two functions, the product of two functions, the quotient of two functions, the ratio of two functions and some of their more interesting properties right. So, with this we end our talk today. Thank you very much. Thank you.